Okay. Um, well, anyway, so we are from uh, Research Institutes of Sweden. We are a community member of the OCP. And uh, what we've done is we've come here today to talk to you about uh, something that we're working on, uh, which is uh, from a, a, a com pre competitive uh, funding opportunity through in Europe. There is a, a funding stream from the European Commission for Innovation Action. And uh, so we're going to tell you a little bit of a story and tell you what we intended to do and then what we actually did do uh, because of the challenges. So my name is John Summers. I'm a scientific lead at uh, Research Institutes of Sweden in the data center sector. And um, Research Institutes of Sweden is actually a, uh, an institute, uh, or in, it's a collection of institutes around Sweden. There's about 14 locations, 3,000 staff. And we are the furthest north in the north of Sweden, close to the Arctic Circle. And the reason we're there is that we started this uh, initiative back in 2015 to look at uh, all aspects of data centers. So, and the reason, the reason we did that is because we had a very friendly neighbor next door, the Meta Data Center, uh, that was uh, operating uh, from around about 2012, I think, yeah. And my colleague here, Jonas, who will talk a bit more about the solution uh, that we actually came up with. I'll start with the story. And my colleague here, Balaj, who uh, is um, uh, sort of a head of re international relations. So we're, we're, we're outside of Europe. We work a lot with European partners, but, uh, you know, the world is getting smaller, isn't it? So, so uh, the story starts, and it's about this Weed District project. It actually starts in the U.S. We were here in 2018 visiting the uh, group of universities that are working on electronic systems. Uh, called the AS2, some of you may know them. Uh, we'd actually visited Villanova. We were traveling from Villanova to Binghamton on Route 81. <laughs> and uh, uh, we got this uh, request from uh, some partners that we knew from previous projects, which is a, a research institute looking at energy in Catalonia, in, 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 uh, in Spain. And they said, would you like to join this, uh, this consortium that's looking at renewable sources of energy uh, for uh, heating and cooling networks. And we thought, well, we're working in data centers. You know, people keep talking about reuse of heat. So what, what can we do? But it has to be innovative. It can't be more of the same. So what we, we wanted to do is connect to the local district heating system. So let me tell you a little bit about Sweden. Sweden um, has probably one of the highest coverages of district heating in Europe. There, there are a couple of countries that that uh, use district heating. I'm originally from the UK. There's hardly any district heating in the UK. We rely on gas boilers in houses. But the idea here is you cent centrally uh, generate heat and then you distribute it uh, through insulated pipes to all the end users, the consumers. So the commercial, the commercial consumers and also residential consumers. And you know, 50% of Swedish buildings, uh, approximately 50% of Swedish buildings are, are using district heating. Now, recovering the heat from data centers, as you saw from the previous uh, presentation as well from Kana, is quite a, a theme today. But, uh, but the trouble with district heating is that, uh, particularly the, 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 the heat district heating we have in Sweden, is it's classified as third generation, so it's very high temperature. And so what you have to do, usually, is put a heat, pu heat pumps in the, in the, in the loop. So you know, we, we have this debate about uh, data centers dropping the compressor and using other methods of cooling them. And now we're bringing heat pumps in to the, into the realm. Where does the heat pump sit? Does it sit in the data center? And then if it does sit in the data center, what should you be doing about your power usage effectiveness calculation? Because it doesn't make you look so good, but you're actually reusing the heat. So there are other metrics that are used. But look at the successful projects in Europe that are, that are using heat from data centers. And I list a few here. And you will see that uh, most all of them have the energy provider in the loop. So the energy provider is maintaining the heat pumps and just connecting to the to the uh, to the um, data center. So so relying on heat pumps is not a bad thing, but it's uh, but it's again from our perspective to look at a small edge data center that we need to be quiet and we need to be able to extract the heat at a, at a higher temperature. Than, than 65 mentioned in the previous uh, slide because we need previous presentation because we need to connect to a high temperature network. So 
this is what we proposed. So first of all, and this was in 2018, and uh, we said, well, let's put a fuel cell in the loop because fuel cells are, are can, be, can be regarded as micro-combined heat and power sources. So they can produce the power for the data center, but they can also give us the heat. So uh, at the time, there's a lot of talk in the north of Sweden about green hydrogen. The reason why that was going on at the time is because there, there's a lot of steel production in the north of Sweden. I think it's the greatest producer of steel in, 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 the, in Europe. And it's based on coal, but there is a movement to use hydrogen. Now, because there's a lot of uh, hydroelectric power in the north of Sweden, you can generate green hydrogen, and therefore you can generate green steel. So why not connect to, to this hybrid uh, project and then use solid oxide fuel cells, which operate at very high temperature, you know, up to, uh, um, you know, well, it says 700 degrees centigrade there, but it does depend on the supplier. Uh, and then at the same time, to get rid of all any um, loud noises or noises from fans, etc., is to go for an immersion system uh, as the data center. So combine the heat from the immersion system uh, with the heat that's generated by the fuel cells and connect that to the district heating. So that was, the, that was the idea. Surely it can't be difficult. That wasn't what we did. So Jonas is going to, well actually before I do that, just let me tell you a little bit about the project. So We District Project was n is not focused on data centers. It's focused on district heating and cooling. It has 21 partners in it from, uh, from nine different countries in Europe. Um, there are four demonstrators. The demonstrator that we're building in the north of Sweden, Luleå, uh, is the one that's focused on this edge-style data center. And there's a number of different technologies. So the project did, did start in October 2019. You know, our idea in October 2018 managed to get funded in October 2019. And then we said, oh, we, now we need to build something. So what did we build? Jonas, uh, <laughs> yeah. how did it go? Thanks, Jan. Yeah, we had a proposal and then we we got the project, okay, so we need to try to build what we, what we promised, more or less. Uh, but we ran into a few challenges. So the first one was, uh, our plan was to run this on, on, on hydrogen. But it showed that there was no real solid oxide fuel cells for uh, hydrogen supply available. There were for other technologies, uh, PAM for instance, but they wouldn't provide the right temperature to, to reject to the district heating systems. Um, so that was one challenge. Uh, so we needed a, a fuel cell that could be run on, on biogas or renewable natural gas or, or, or natural gas, but since there are no piped gas in Sweden, we, uh, we had to... And, and also from a sustainability point of view, we wanted to be sustainable and use biogas. Uh, so th th this maybe it wasn't such a big problem because we didn't really have a continuous flow of hydrogen either uh, when, when we start scratching the surface of, of this uh, hybrid plant which was supposed to produce the hydrogen. Uh, so so the, the solution was to store uh, RNG on site to, to, to provide the, the gas and that was a lot of hay that gets to get the, all the permits through to get that in place, <coughs> but eventually we sort, sorted that out. Uh, so, uh, also the, the, the solid oxide fuels that were av available uh, were not really to the scale that we wanted them to be, because we had sketched, uh, was it 50 kilowatt solutions from the start? Yeah, and we had to go down in scale because the ones that were available on the market is only 1.5 kilowatts. So we ended up buying nine of them connecting them uh, uh, up. Uh, and then the idea was to boost the temperature or the, 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 the heat coming out of the, the immersion cooling system into the fuel cells to use actually the hot water coming out of the immersion system into the fuel cells to cool the fuel cells and that by that boosting the temperature. But that was not easy either matching flow rates and so on. So, so we ended up actually using the heat from the fuel cell, no, from the data center to preheat the air for the fuel cell. Uh, so yes, we ran into a lot of problems before we could have things up running. But eventually we, get, we got this up uh, with, a, with a, we're using 20 foot 
containers to build this, uh, as you see here in the picture, to the two stacked ISO containers on top of each other. There is a picture on the next slide that shows them more, more clear. Uh, one for, for the data center part, one for the fuel cell, and then the biogas were stored uh, a bit away from, since you need some clearances and stuff to, to store that amount of biogas. So this is a picture from last winter when we managed to get all the, the stuff in place. So we have to the left there four tons of biogas uh, in the storage. We have a, a pressure reducing system right behind that, uh, and there is a, a covered trench with gas line coming on into the two, two, two um, other 20-foot containers, which the top one contains the fuel cells, and the bottom one, uh, the immersion system. So this is more of a detailed sketch what's going on inside, and I don't know if I have the time to go through in detail everything here. Uh, but in principle, you could see that in the bottom we have the, the immersion system, which re rejects heat up there to the, to the top container, which contains the fuel cell. So there is an uh, air preheater there that pre preheats the air because the fuel cells don't like to have, for instance, minus 25 degree air, which could be the case during winter at, at intake, so, so it preheats that air. And the, the heat coming out from the fuel cell are uh, reacted through a heat exchanger to the district heating system there, showed to the right of the picture. So this is a picture from inside the, the container. Uh, to the left, you have the fuel cells, nine of the solid oxide fuel cells stacked up. And to the top left there, you could see the, the preheating of the air. Uh, the big uh, metal pipe there is the exhaust from the from the from the exhaust air from the fuel cell. At the right, there are two pictures from the from the bottom container showing the the immersion system, all stacked up with open compute hardware. Here are some some commissioning results showing that that we're up running. I don't know really if we could see in detail what's what's showing there. Uh, yeah, well, we have a full full uh, monitoring system that we could could monitor and save all the data produced here, so so we can trace what we're we're doing. To the right, there is a operating panel from one of the the fuel cells that we could also access. To make this happen, you need a lot of good friends. Some of them are here, uh, Alpha Laval, for instance, and also Submar is, is present. Uh, Box module helped us to produce the, the the fuel cell container and polar gas for for providing the the gas. Solid power or the the fuel cells provider and Vattenfall, the power company, actually supported us with the container hosting the the data center part. And there's of course a lot of more project partners in the We District project and uh, total. So this is just a, a quick go through of all of them. Finally, some call, call to actions. While well, OCP service optimized for immersion cooling, we have noticed that there is happening a lot of there uh, already. I don't know if you have any comments to that, Jan. Yeah, I think that we, we have realized that uh, at the time we used OCP uh, servers that were repurposed, so they're not, uh, they're not very dense, but um, one, of the, one of the aspects of immersion is obviously when you use air-cooled heat sinks and you immerse them, they're not, uh, they're not so effective. But there does seem to be a, a more, more development now on that. But it was actually mm. mentioned at the previous talk I was at that, there were, that in the, um, the, the ACF, the ACS uh, on immersion, that uh, this is not the case. It's not so easy to find so many servers no. that are ready for Im immersion ready, put it that way. And the other thing is, uh, how, how is there an interest of, of in including fuel cells as prime power for, for data centers? And, and also doing it, combining it with, with heat recovery. That's right. And the fact that we had DC, DC, we had DC bus bar in the bottom of the immersion tank and the fuel cells can produce DC, the unfortunate thing is that we couldn't connect the two DC buses together. Well, that was, uh, that was originally the idea, but that... Uh, but, uh, but anyway, we, we are a research organization. We do a lot of projects. And we wanted just to, one last slide to, to mention our, our colleague here who's uh, 
who's uh, um, looking at our international relations side. Balaj, would you like to say a few words as well at the yeah, end? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, so basically, this is not the only project we are ru uh, running. We have uh, several projects uh, 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 that we are running in our test facility, which is one of the biggest, probably the biggest in, uh, in the Nordics of, of, of this kind. Uh, in that uh, test data center, we uh, focus on su uh, uh, sustainability and, and efficiency. Uh, we run projects like uh, liquid cooling, edge, air thermal management, uh, life cycle assessment, uh, waste heat utilization, just to uh, name but a, a few. Uh, we have a partnership program, but there's also a few other ways how, how uh, you can uh, uh, work with us. Um, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, just so feel free to, to reach out to us uh, if, if you're interested. Uh, to work with us if you want to understand, want to get inspired by our activities, want us to uh, work with you dedicatedly on, on, on a project, or you just would like to have some presence in, uh, in the Nordics because we have quite a number of uh, visitors uh, coming to us. I don't know if there are questions. Thanks, yeah. We've run out of time, haven't we? But, uh, go ahead, yeah. Short question. Um, in comparison to using the, no, the, let's say, the normal setup of using a heat pump connected to the district heating, how much better is your, is your idea? I mean, how is... Well, I guess there's a lot more technical details that we could go into. I mean, solid oxide fuel cells that we're operating at the moment, uh, they're reporting around about a 50, 56% efficiency. I guess you could do some calculations. The, that's on the electrical side, so you're generating the electricity, but at the same time, we've got about 20% 20, 20 of that the energy is being converted into is, is the heat. So I haven't done, we haven't done the calculations on that, but that's probably a good thing to do, really, to, for comparison. Well, it depends, I would say, also how, what, what you're comparing against. I mean, if you have a, a heat pump and your, your, your power supply is, is from a coal pipe plant, it's, 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 uh, it's difficult to make that straight. For the PUE value, for example, the data center. Sorry, is there somebody else saying something? Yeah. The PUE, yes. Uh, I mean, the PUE, uh, we haven't calculated the PUE of this, but the whole, the whole concept really is that if you're deploying urban, uh, you're deploying edge in urban areas, you know, consider using uh, biogas from, from the organic waste. I mean, it, it ends up as methane in the, in the environment, but if you use it through this system, it's still CO2, but it's less. Uh, it's it's greenhouse gas potential uh, effect is lower. That's the argument that we're making here, um, and it's close to the end users if it's urban. Yeah. Yeah. Just one quick uh, comment on the folks at Rise. Again, great work being done out of Europe. They're one of our premier OCP experience centers, so you can go to Rise, or they can do virtual work. Um, this is where you can do a lot of the testing and evaluation of OCP hardware, the experts in thermal management out of rise. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks. Thank you.